Okay, so let's look at this idea of what are conservative vector fields. Since we have quite a lot of um, uh, different topics covered, they actually combine into uh, the conservative vector fields concept. First of all, just uh, a quick reminder that a conservative vector field is a, a vector field such that um, f, a vector field f such that the gradient of some small fun uh, some uh, function f of x, y, z, uh, for instance, if capital F is of x, y, z, um, eh, that this equality holds. In other words, this is not, uh, it's easy when it's a gradient vector field. So you start with the small f, and then you take its gradient, and that basically is um, obviously a, a conservative vector field. The issue becomes when we have given a given vector field and we want to check if it's conservative. If it is conservative, then there should be some, uh, it should be possible for us to find this small f function of say x, y, z in the case of uh, three dimensions, uh, three variable problem or f of x, y in either case, depending on the, uh, the vector field, which could be of x, y, z or of x, y. Now, um, so this f is called the potential function, okay, it's called the potential function, and earlier, in an earlier video, video you might have seen that we uh, have stated that um, finding the, this potential function is equivalent to, if we can find this potential function, uh, then we can, we say that the vector field is conservative. This is rather a cumbersome task to just check if the field is conservative, because conservative vector fields have various properties. Um, for instance, we've just seen um, early, in earlier videos that um, the fundamental theorem of uh, line integrals, for instance, is actually applicable to um, gradient vector fields. And gradient vector fields, a vector field that is conservative, is actually a gradient vector field. So, or can be thought of as a gradient vector field. So there are, we can use the fundamental theorem of uh, line integrals as well for such um, uh, vector fields by um, identifying the potential function. But there are other uh, ways of checking if something is a conservative vector field. And this is what we want to now comprehensively cover in this video. So tests to check if a vector field is conservative. Now, if a vector field is, say for instance, a vector field of this nature, um, where P and Q are functions of XY. So P and Q are functions of XY, in fact, okay? So in, in such a case, um, a simple test like this one, which is if partial PY is equal to partial QX, okay, if that is true, then F is a conservative vector field. That's a first very easy test um, we can perform to check if um, a vector field is conservative. But this works only for a vector field which is of uh, uh, variables X and Y. It, uh, let's look at a quick example uh, of this. So here's an example, uh, x minus y and x minus 2, x minus y and x minus 2. So um, this would be your Q, P and this would be your Q. So we're going to take this uh, first one with respect to y. So that's going to give me minus 1. So partial PY, okay, if this is my P and this is my Q, is equal to minus 1 and partial QX is equal to plus 1. So they are not equal. So therefore, this is not a conservative vector. Therefore, not conservative. Okay. So it's as simple as that. Uh, very quick, in fact. Here's another example. So here again, this is our P, this is our Q. So partial P by Y turns out to be um, 2X. And partial Q by X is also 2X. So therefore, it's conservative. So as you can see, uh, rather simple, easy ways to test if these um, uh, vector fields are conservative. Then one can, uh, one can be assured of finding a potential function small f, which we will look at in a, in a bit. Another one, since we've now covered at this stage the curl of f, then we know that if the curl of f, in fact, is equal to the zero vector, then f is a conservative, or f is conservative. Okay, f is conservative. Now, uh, another idea, uh, several ideas that we can connect together are as follows. Um, as you saw before, uh, because of th this, um, the fundamental theorem of line integrals, 
which states that f dot dr is equal to simply f at r of uh, b minus f at r of a. Now this uh, basically, this fundamental theorem of, um, in line integrals is basically stating that um, this, this line integral, in fact, is independent of the path because if it is a gradient vector field, then clearly C1, all that is important are the starting and end points. So as long as uh, C1, suppose, uh, so let's make a little table. So C1, uh, suppose that C1 starting point is A and end point is B. C2's starting point is A and end point is B. C3's starting point is A and end point is B. Now suppose that A, B are joined like this. A, B are joined like this and here we have this way. The fundamental, th as long as we are calculating uh, the line integral of grad f dot dr over c1, whether it's c1, clearly whether it's c2 or it's c3, all of these will in fact be the same. Because as you will note, this says that as long as it's a gradient vector field and we take the uh, grad f dot or dr over some path, then it's just f at rb minus f at ra, irrespective of what r is actually, because the starting and end points will be, rb will be the end point, and ra will have to be the um, starting point. So in this case, it means that the line integral, this particular line integral, is independent of path. So it is independent of path. Not only that, but you should also notice that if f is a um, uh, if f is a uh, conservative vector field, then clearly, then clearly, uh, this theorem applies as well. So we will have f dot dr, in fact, is equal to the potential function r at b minus r at a. Okay. So this uh, that is if. If this is true, then this potential function, uh, this f dot dr, will simply simply be this potential function here, which we of course have to find, but that's not the point. The point is that it's a conservative vector field, so f dot dr must be this. This also further implies, you know, you can extend the idea to say that it means that if f is a conservative vector field, then its line integrals are independent of path, right? So if f is a conservative vector field, then its line integrals are independent of path. So let's continue and say, how do we find these potential functions? So now if we know if a uh, vector field is conservative, the one can see that, for instance, using the fundamental theorem of line integrals, it's uh, very beneficial to know what the potential function is because it can help us calculate, um, for instance, the line integrals on, uh, of such uh, vector fields. So how do we find these potential functions? So here's the best thing is to look at an example. So here's an example, as you can see here. Now clearly, uh, if this is a conservative vector field, if f is conservative, this means that uh, there is a function f, uh, and this is the situation. f must be equal to grad f, obviously. Which means that, of course, um, fx must be y squared. fy must be 2xy plus e to the 3z. And fz, the z derivative, must be 3y e to the 3z. So we have to find this magic f that satisfies all three conditions. So if we start with the first one, the first condition, the fx, for instance, we can clearly see that f of x, y, z is simply the integral of y squared with respect to x, which is just y squared x, some function g of the other variables, y and z. So we end up with this. Now, we already know that um, the y derivative, if we take the y derivative of this, so this implies that fy is equal to 2xy plus partial g by partial y. But that should be equal to this fy, which we already have here. So then we equate these, and we end up with this. When we simplify this, we find that the, the, these two cancel, and therefore we're left with partial g by y is equal to e to the 3z. Now, this is, this is something we can integrate quite easily, and we do that 
This implies that g of x, y is equal to the integral of e3, z with respect to y, which works out as y, e3, z, and that gives us our g plus a function h of z only. So let's see what happens. Uh, next, if we calculate, if that's our g, that means now our f has become, uh, update our f, uh, f of x, y, z, sorry, is equal to uh, y squared x, okay, uh, plus y e 3 z plus h of z. Now if we calculate f z from this one, we end up with 0 here, and here we'll get 3y e to the 3 z plus dh dz, because h is a function of z only, and that should of course equal this, because f z is 3y e to the 3 z. So we do that, 3y e to the 3 z. Now, that leads to the following. This 3y e to the 3z and this 3y e to the 3z will cancel from both sides. And this implies that we have dh dz equal to 0, which implies that h is in fact some constant, c. Therefore, uh, f of x, y, z finally turns out to be x, y squared plus y e to the 3z plus some constant. And that is our potential function. And you can check it, of course. Uh, this is the nice thing, one of the nice little uh, attractions of, of this particular uh, uh, issue is if you calculate, in fact, grad f now, it turns out it's equal to the x derivative of this, which is y squared, the x uh, y derivative of this whole thing, which is going to be 2xy plus e to the 3z, and the z derivative, um, which is going to be just 3y. And you can compare this to our original. So here, you can see, there it is, um, y squared i, 2xy plus e3z, and 3y e to the 3z. So, turns out to be the same. So that's the way to find